Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. We're going to start today's episode by looking at a photo. This photo is the worst example of an electrical hazard created by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing that I've ever seen. So what happened here? Well, somebody hired a HMI off me and they couldn't figure out how to disconnect the head lead. And they came to the conclusion that maybe they just need to use more force. So they went to it with a spanner. When in reality, all they needed to do was twist the locking collar. So HMI head leads are the most damaged piece of equipment in my kit through misuse. It is unbelievable how many of these things get destroyed. But connecting and disconnecting a HMI head lead is really, really simple once you know how to do it. Really is. So uh, let's have a look. Alright, so before we talk about connecting and disconnecting HMI head leads, I'd like to share with you the most common way in which people damage head leads when they rent them off me, and that is dropping them. Now, I'm not talking about people rocking up and dropping them on the ground. What I'm talking about is the head lead being dropped from a great height. So I'll give you an example of scenarios where this happens. So let's say people are filming in a factory and you've got the HMI up in a gantry. So they're down shooting on the ground, at ground level, and the HMI is one floor up shooting over a balcony edge or over a gantry edge. Now, you might have the ballast down on the ground floor and be running the, the HMI head lead from the ground up to where the HMI is. Now, if you've got an inexperienced assistant when it comes to packing up or an inexperienced uh, gaffer, instead of pulling the HMI head lead up to them, up on the gantry, and then wrapping it up and carrying it down the stairs, what a lot of people do is disconnect the head lead and just throw it over the edge of the gantry. Okay, so this basically goes down to the ground, hits the cement, and then gets bent out of shape. Now here's the problem. If this gets bent out of shape, it won't connect. All right, so if you go to your next location, if you've still got another location to go, and you try to connect the head lead, well, now it won't connect and you can't run the HMI. So you've got to treat these with respect. Now let's start off uh, talking about how to connect to the head. Now I'm not going to do it here because it's difficult to see. So I'm just going to do it with uh, cables. I'm going to plug one in into the other, which is essentially the same thing. Okay, it's, it's identical process. All right, so um, on the head side, uh, which is the, the male side or the, the plug side that's got the pins. Remember, pins always go to the power. All right, you've got a circular piece here, which sticks out from the locking collar, which we'll talk about later. And on the receiver side or the female side or the socket side, um, we also have a circular groove here. Okay, so that circular piece goes into that circular groove, pretty straightforward. Now to make sure you get the correct pins into the correct holes, we have what's called a keyway. So I'll go back to this piece. Now you see this isn't a complete circle of steel here. It's got a gap, okay? And on the um, socket side, you can see it's not a complete hole. It's not a complete trench. There's a piece sticking out there. So that's our keyways, okay? So to plug them in, you need to line up your keyways. Now at no point do you use any force, okay? So what you can do is you can visually do it. Pretty straightforward, okay? Or if you can't see the keyways, maybe you're working in the dark, what you do is you just uh, put the circle inside the other circle, okay? And with hardly any force, just let them touch. Just turn one side until the keyways line up, and there you go, all right? Now next we're gonna get onto the locking collar, which is this bit that turns. So I'll just explain how the locking collar works. All right, so on the um, receiver side, the female side or the socket side, you see you've got these grooves, okay? And uh, that's where the locking collar uh, goes into. And the locking collar has these teeth, okay? So those teeth basically go in those grooves. Now here's one thing you need to know about the locking collar, all right? You don't force the cable together and then lock it into place with the locking collar. When you turn the locking collar, it actually pulls the two pieces together and makes them join, okay? So that's the job of a locking collar. It's not your job to apply force. All right, so let's get back into it. Okay, so I, first off, I find my keyways found my keyways. Now to help me get um, the locking collar into those grooves, uh, what you can do is you can line up these dots. Okay, so once you've got the dots underneath each other, um, the, the jaw of the locking collar is lined up to those grooves. Okay, and then you just turn the locking collar until the dots meet up. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how much force uh, is required to do that. So I don't do any twisting like this. Okay, 
the female end, I hold that still and stable, and I'll put the, the uh, male end in, or the plug end, and then I just turn the locking collar with my two fingers, my finger and my thumb, okay? So I make a, a pistol grip, okay? So I go around, that's it. So all I did was that. I didn't do any forcing, all right? Now if I wanna unlock it, I just go the other way, okay? The locking collar does all the work for me. I don't need to force anything, all right? So very quickly recap on that. Okay, find the keyways, line up the circle, line up the dots. Now, if you can't see the dots, maybe uh, maybe you've got an old head lead and the paint's worn off, okay? What you, what you do is basically just turn the locking collar with hardly any force, have the two pieces uh, pressing against each other, but no force. Just turn that locking collar and it will slip into the groove, okay? and then pistol grip and you're locked. Now to check that you're locked, have a listen. Most will click, but if you don't hear a click, it doesn't mean it, it's not locked necessarily. Just check that the dots now overlap and there should be three dots. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with a different brand. And this one has a very large locking collar, which is designed for your hands but when it locks together, you can't see any dots for alignment. So you have to do it largely by feel. All right, so line up your keyways, which you do need to do visually. Okay, once you find your keyways, then you can find the grooves for the locking collar, which I've just found by slowly turning the locking collar and then pistol grip. And I have to listen for the click. Okay, so I'll go back and, because uh, once I do the final bit, I cover over the dots. I need to listen for the click. All right, now we know the theory, let's put it into practice. Okay, so I line up my keyways. Then I get my um, locking collar lined up to the grooves. Then I pistol grip, which has locked it. And now I don't just leave my cable hanging because that's poor form, that can damage your, uh, where, where the cables join. I like to lock it back in place and secure the cable. In case anything pulls on the cable, it's not going to uh, affect my joins. So I like to secure the cable down. So I like to do one wrap around with the string and then back onto the stirrup or the yoke. So anything pulls on that, okay, it doesn't affect my joins or, or rip at my uh, connectors here. But when you do this, leave enough leeway here, leave enough play that you can tilt your light. All right, now for the easy part, connecting to the ballast. Okay, so line up your keyways. Okay, Okay, so I'm in the keyway now. Now a good way to check is if you can rotate the, the whole connector, you're not in the keyway. There's the keyway. Now we line up our locking collar so we can line up the dots for that. Okay, and then we twist the locking collar right to tighten. Okay, so right direction to tighten. And there we go, we're locked on. Now let's talk about disconnecting. And this is where you can do a lot of damage if you do it wrong. For example, if I twist here, I can rotate all of the cabling internally and do a lot of damage to the contacts. So I need to make sure I turn the locking collar. Now, when you're disconnecting from the ballast, the locking collar is easy to identify because it's the bit of the connector that is the closest to the ballast. You can't miss it. Now, when we undo it, we want to rotate it left to loosen. Okay, so going that way, left to loosen. All right, so grab it underneath, do your pistol grip, and then rotate left to loosen, and you're out. Simple as that. Now I'm gonna show you how to get this in real quick. Okay, so my keyway is up the top. Now if I get my locking collar dot aligned to about 11.30, if it was a clock face. Now everything's lined up, and all I've gotta do is put it in and twist. So watch this. Now the final part of the video, disconnecting the head. And it's really simple. All we've got to do is turn the locking collar in the left direction. Remember, left to loosen. But here's where a lot of people get muddled. Where's the locking collar? There's a lot of bits that look like a locking collar on this. All right, so remember the job of the locking collar is to pull the two bits together. Okay, so the locking collar must be in the center somewhere and it must be the biggest bit in the center. All right, so you look along the center, find the biggest bit, that's the locking collar there. Now, if you're still not sure if that's the locking collar, just check if you've got the dots, okay? Now, here's the thing. The locking collar is on the plug side. Now, I'll just explain what I mean by that, okay? 
This is the plug side. It's got the locking collar on it. Okay, so from the plug side, we want to turn left to loosen. Okay, so from the plug side, left to loosen, and you disconnect it. Okay, so I'll just run you through that with the HMI. All right, so this is the plug side. So left to loosen from the plug side. Now, if you're still not following me, okay, left to loosen from the HMI side. Okay, simple as that. Now, let's not overcomplicate things here. Okay, let's get really simple. Remember, you don't have to apply a lot of force. Okay, if it's not turning in one direction, just turn it the other. Simple as that. Okay, see you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.